Finding the right words to say how you feel can sometimes be hard. But what if you're one of Britain's 600,000 stammerers? <laughs> Stammering is a debilitating affliction which impacts their lives every single day. He's so nervous about saying his vows and doing a speech at the wedding. I need, I need, I need a voice, I need to be heard. But now, to tackle their stammers head on, Stammer. Stammer. I can't even say that word. They've enrolled on an intense four-day speech therapy course run by Gareth Gates. Hit these sounds. Imagine you're knocking these words down. At the end of the course, they'll have to face an audience and deliver a fluent speech. What? Gareth's job is to make that happen. Don't give a shit about anybody. It's about you now, OK? And it's about you overcoming this. But can he teach them to break a habit of a lifetime? I understand how frustrating it is. I completely understand. And confront their greatest fears <laughs> to transform their lives forever. I genuinely really want this. Simon has had a severe stammer his whole life. Sometimes I felt as the I've been through and 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 hell and then back with this. That's really good, Libby. It's lovely. Oh, I'll try again. Print, print it straight away again. Twenty-five-year-old Sarah Webster has also stammered since early childhood. It has affected every aspect of her life, including her decision to become a nanny. For me, it's about the interaction with the with the ch the ch the ch children, and and when I'm with them, I'm just so much more at ease. Well, that has come out well. I feel that my stammer does, just Duh. does not play such a large, you know, does not affect me so much at all. But even her choice of job is not without complications. There are certain words that I know that I will stammer on. For instance, the, the word... I can't say it. I try and use... Well, I try and avoid that word so that I, so that I don't have to embarrass myself. But now, Sarah and Simon are embarking on an unusual speech therapy course called the Maguire Programme. I've had qu quite a few um, years of um, speech for <laughs> And it hasn't ever helped this... Well, here's my last hope. The programme takes a radical approach to speech therapy. Its courses are just four days long and are run exclusively by people who stammer themselves. Sarah and Simon's course leader is the actor, singer and voice coach, Gareth Gates. The course is a very intense four-day program and it's about us giving these guys everything they need to help gain control of their stammer. Gareth also grew up with a stammer. It was the Maguire program which turned his life around. The thought of a stammerer helping to coach and teach other stammerers to speak 
is quite mind-blowing. And I reached a certain level on the program where I thought, well, maybe it's time to give back. And I absolutely love it. Joining Sarah and Simon on the course are students from across the country, including Matthew, Rory and Mohammed. My challenge is to take these people and to equip them with the tools and techniques that they need to transform their lives. Thank you. Welcome, new students. This is the last time that you guys will be speaking like this. And from this moment on, you're going to be speaking with so much control. Am I nervous about it? Of course. There's a lot of pressure on me. But I want it to be a success because I know how much of a difference in life it will make. It's the night before the course begins, and in just four days' time, the new students will be expected to deliver a fluent speech in front of an audience. But right now, that seems like a long way off. Do you have any brothers or sisters? Yes, I have. Th 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 three, three. I have um, two sisters and three. Brothers. Um, I'm, uh, I'm, 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 I'm 20 years old. My address is f flat 55. I'm um, convinced. Well done, mate. Well done. Well done, Tyler. Great. Well done, Tyler. Attention, up and eyes um, shut. I found it hard, yeah. Real hard. Simon lives in North Yorkshire with his partner Sarah and their two children. I can do wind bullseye. Being a parent who stammers brings its own worries. Don't eat it. Simon often gets scared that it's going to affect the children's speech. Um, like That's reading insane. bedtime stories. He prefers me to do things <laughs> like that because it will take him so much longer and I can see him getting frustrated with himself. And it, it does upset me as well yeah. because of how frustrating it must be for Simon. Right, Sheldon. And... Colour some more. Next year, Simon and Sarah are planning to get married. I think he's so nervous about saying his vows and doing a speech at the wedding, but he can't give up on doing things just because of his stammer. To infinity and beyond. Of a come and be able to control my um, 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 son, damn it, it would um, mean um, everything. It's day one of the course. This morning, Gareth will begin to rebuild the new students' voices. But first, he has to break down their old ones. Now is a brand new start. We're going to strip back everything. We're going to learn to talk again, starting with learning a new way of breathing. Every time somebody speaks, it starts with a breath. And so that's what we're going to address first and teach them a new way, a more powerful way of breathing that will assist our new speaking technique. To help the new students get a feel for this, they wear belts around their chests. When we breathe in, the ribs move out. We breathe out, the ribs move in. So we breathe when we want to breathe. We speak when we want to speak. OK? 
Okay, we're no longer dictated by our stammers. This technique is called costal breathing. So breathe in three, two, one, and breathe. If they can master it, Gareth believes even the most severe stammer can be brought under control. Really fill those lungs so they can't be filled anymore. But it involves reprogramming everything they know about speech. For so long, the stammers dictated who they are and when they speak and how they speak. Now it's about those individuals taking control themselves. Today, the new students will spend up to 12 hours working on this new technique. Good. It's really important that we just start to be disciplined and committed to ourselves and we start to follow directions. So nobody talking at all. It's important that the new students do not talk because it's just second nature for them to talk the way they've spoke all their lives. And so we ask them not to talk at all so that they don't slip back into those old habits. Living with a stammer is real hard work. It's frustrating, soul-destroying. You can't be the person that you want to be. I made out I didn't know the name of my, my school for years. People had asked me, what school do you go to? Oh, uh, I can't remember. To save the humiliation of going <laughs> lower fields, you know? And I'd rather look stupid and dumb and thick as opposed to stammer in front of people. And again, that's, that's quite hard. I, uh, I really want to help people who are um, um, who are really in need. Gareth has come a long way since the 17-year-old schoolboy first stepped onto our screens. Uh, my name is... Uh, Come on, man. Uh, just take this on. Gareth Gates is what I was trying to say. And watching that, I hardly recognise myself. When you're ready. Everybody's looking for that something. You are 100% coming to London. Yes. <laughs> yes! <laughs> Gareth's overnight success was a dream come true but it also put his voice under the most intense pressure. I've always had great confidence in delivering a song, but it was the everyday life stuff that I struggled with. He enrolled on the Maguire programme and, and has never looked back. Life for me these days is much better than 10 years ago, and I can now be the person I want to be. So on the board there is this basic cycle of speaking. This is what we follow every time we speak. Once they've got to grips with a new way of breathing, we will add sounds to that. But there's a perfect timing point, and if they miss that, the technique won't work. The perfect timing point where we speak is now. Okay? In three, two, one. Ah, good. We'll say every sound of the alphabet so yeah. that it affirms to themselves that they can say every sound. Yeah. 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 Good. Hit these sounds. Imagine you're knocking these words down. Alpha, Foxtrot, India, Juliet, Mike. Good. You can say every sound. So it's not a physical defect. It's just these building up of negative experiences, negative associations. Stammering is thought to be brought on by a number of different causes. For some, it's to do with the way the brain processes speech. For others, it could result from trauma. But in some cases, it may also be hereditary. For 16-year-old Rory Melly, stammering runs in the family. Rory's been stammering since he was three years old. And and it was like, all of a sudden, in one sentence, one day, and he was trying to ask me something, and he just started stammering. And coming from a family who stammer, it was quite a shock. There was 
one very special person that guides the orchestra. Who is he? Is it the... Uh, I'm sorry, the uh, conductor? The conductor. Excellent. On various occasions at school, I have been called a few names. A, a reoccurring one is... A, a Sutter Heed. And a, another one is... A Samra Boy. And a, another one is a Mr. Beatboxer. You know, as a beatboxer, I would go ticker ticker and stuff like that. But like Gareth, there is one area of Rory's life where he is remarkably stammer-free. Hey there, Teenage Baltimore! Don't change the channel, because it's time for the Corny Collins Show! I take my acting on stage as, as a bit of an escape, really. An escape from um, who I am. Uh, when I'm performing on stage, I'm not playing a Rory Melly, a little stammer boy. I'm playing someone else completely different with a different, with a different background, a different history, different feelings and, and different thoughts. Oh, on the drive, the coats and leave the squares behind and then they shake it, shake it, shake it like the loose. It's great because it's like totally fluent on the stage speaking. And the last play he was in, I thought, it'd be great now if he could just speak like that the whole time. You know, it doesn't work like that, unfortunately. I really want it to make a career out of singing and acting, but my fear is is that if if my summer doesn't improve, then then employers won't hire me. Kids in town. It's the end of day one. When the students arrived yesterday, Gareth videoed them all. Last night we asked you guys to tell us your name, to which all of you struggled. My name is... Sarah Webster. But since then, Gareth has been drilling the new technique solidly. So now we're going to give you, new students, an opportunity to stand up and cancel out that situation. Whenever you're ready, there's no order again. Sarah Webster. Well done. Well done. Stay still. Well done. Well done, Sarah. Rory Melly. Simon Robinson. Today was long hours, it was hard work, and they've made a great improvement. But I don't want them to think that, oh, I've done it now, I've done it, and so I can sit back and relax a bit and become complacent. I just need to continue to work hard and hope that I'll be able to get The new students have taken the first step towards finding their voices. Are you finding that you're actually getting used to the technique? Yes, slowly. It's important to highlight that this method is certainly not a cure. It's something that they'll continually need to work on, like I do, every day. And that's what will determine whether they have continued success or not. Ah, good. Yeah. Good. What we want you to do is try and speak in a controlled way. 
exaggerated. It's all about using this new method, this new way of speaking. Let's not use any more than four words per breath. No more. Go now, please. I hope to become a sports therapist. Mohammed is a trainee physiotherapist. Whenever I'm in the practicals, I'll get, I'll, I'll get nervous and then I'll probably just like uh, stammer. Talking to patients is an essential part of the job. If Mohammed can't do that, it might mean a change in career. How is how's your day been? Yeah, okay. You yeah, alright? So. Oh yeah, that's, that's good. I know what I'm doing, but it's just the struggle of trying to say it. And if I can't say it, then they think that I don't really know it. Which I do, but then my stomach gets in the way. But mainly focus on the hamstrings and the... Uh, and the... Uh, the... A quadriceps and maybe do the IT band as well. To overcome my stammer would uh, really uh, help me with my with my with my a career because that means I could do the jobs that I want to do. But if I didn't, it would make me get a job that doesn't involve talking, and uh, that would be it. The students are continuing to work hard on their technique. But Gareth has noticed some are finding it more difficult to adopt than others. Simon Robinson. Simon on Wednesday was the most overt, but often the, the easiest to crack because there's less things happening up here and it's more just, this is how I am. It's very clear that I have this real problem and so I'll just do anything. Show me what to do. Whereas I think with... Sarah, she's always managed to be fluent in situations in life. When you say a word, so like birth and then breakfast, why don't you just stop on the word when you know it's going to be difficult? I can see her sort of questioning why, why we're doing this. Is this much better than how we were speaking before? Well, right now, maybe not, because it's quite mechanical, but it's a, a means to an end. Because that people are going to know, still know, the stammer. Uh, she's not vocalising that yet, but I can see it. And covert stammerers do that. Gareth decides to take Sarah to one side for some individual coaching. The way that you're using the technique is great. I still feel you can be more exaggerated, la. Like I'm been now, Gareth Gates, Bradford, Sarah Webster, Suffolk. Good. What sort of ma music do you like? Oh, release the air. Kinds of music. Good. Kinds again. Oh. Kinds of music. Good. I just can't, <laughs> can't get, I can't get to grips. With the breathing? With, it sounds so mechanical, <laughs> but I'm trying to. Good, well, that's all we're asking just now. It's harder to take those steps backwards and speak mechanically. Of course it is, because you've spent years of trying to make people think that you're fluent and you don't have this problem and this affliction. Yeah, and I understand how frustrating it is. I completely understand. We've all been there. Trust me, if you persevere with this, you will see results. Thank you. Mm. Cool. As a covert stammerer, Sarah tries to conceal it from others, especially around her family and boyfriend, Carpenter, Will. I've learned to live with the stammer now for 25 years. Just a couple more. She's become quite good at hiding it and very good at thinking on her feet to try and find different words. And it's obviously not a great way of dealing with it because quite often her sentences don't make the best of sense when she's desperately searching for a different word as rather than use a word she'd struggle on but uh, 
hopefully with the programme she can get past that and use any word she wants to use. I'm quite happy I'm speaking to my friends and family and I'll, and I'll be able to speak quite well fluently really and just have the odd stammer here or there but I just want to be able to speak fluently at, at all given times not just when I'm in you know my comfort zone. Be careful. As a nanny Sarah works with children every day but her real dream is to become a teacher. When I first came out of university, this t t teacher said to me, you know, you'll never be able to become a teacher because of your stammer. And you'll just be, your life will, well, they said your life will be um, um, misery because you'll be ridiculed by the children. So to be able to over, to be able to you know not have this down my point you know that would just be amazing. Another long day on the course has reached its final session. One of our biggest challenges and fears is the phone, and so we're going to really focus on facing that fear head on. When the students leave the course, they will be expected to make phone calls every day. Until now, 28-year-old Londoner Matthew Ogeni has avoided the phone at all costs. Uh, would you like to make a phone call for us? And would you ask for Summerfield Supermarket okay. in Birmingham? Okay, thank you. So it's ringing now. Uh, hello. Is it possible to have the phone number for the Suburb fields in oh, fuck's sake, in Birmingham, please. That's enough, mate. Thank you. What do you do for a living? I work as a professional artist model. And what does that involve? That, <laughs> that basically <laughs> involves me um, posing for artists in the nude. So you must work out then? I do. I do. <laughs> I do work out a lot, yeah. Matthew has been modelling for eight years. Finding a job where his body could do the talking came as a revelation. I thought, well, I don't have to speak here. I'm just laying down nude on the sofa or sitting down in a chair. And that sort of <laughs> appealed to me. Matthew's lack of confidence in his voice could hardly be in starker contrast to his life as a model. He even takes bookings for hen parties. Have my clothes up, I have a sense of power that I can't I can't get from when I'm speaking. You're very muscular. Thank you. I get that a lot from people. <laughs> his career may be flourishing, but his ambitions stretch further than disrobing. I feel that I'm I'm like using this as a sort of you could say this distraction in a way. It's like how I look, it cannot only get me so far, you know. If I had more control over my speech, I would go into acting. But I need, I need, I need a voice. I need to be, to be like heard. Yeah. How are you? Well, thank you. Matthew again. Simon Robinson. My last holiday was in the Isle of Wight. I'm excited. I love cooking. Once a fortnight. Well, thank you for calling. It's been nice. Bye for now. Bye for now. Bye for now. That call was like a dream. It was like. It wasn't me speaking, 
But it counts to that. But it. Answer that, but it was me speaking. It's day three of the course. Gareth wants to take the new students and their fledgling voices to a more challenging environment. Speaking in the room now is becoming a comfort zone for them. They're getting used to it, it's familiar, it's the same faces. But now, what we're going to do is take them out of that and place them out on the street. Today, the new students will each have to approach and speak to a hundred members of the public. Does anybody know the way? <laughs> Not an easy task if you've spent your whole life shying away from strangers. So, guys, this is the moment that we put all of our hard work to practice, okay? This is what we've been working up towards. What we're essentially asking these new students to do is walk up to someone and say, I have a problem. I have a stammer and it's really tough, but it's, it's necessary and it's what has to be done. If you have problems, which I'm sure you will in the first few, just persevere and allow your coach to coach you through that, okay? I have every faith that all of you are gonna really, really shine and this is your moment to shine, okay? Each new student has been paired with a more experienced member of the programme, but it's up to them to do the talking. You don't know you need to be a little bit more certain. what people are going to say or how they're going to react. I've been dreading coming out here and admitting to people that I stammer. Excuse me, please. I'm a recovering stammerer. stammerer. I'm trying hard with the technique and... and I'm still finding it hard to ac accomplish it. Stammerer, stammer, stammerer. I can't even say that word. I'm recovering. Stammerer, stammerer. I'm just so nervous for Sarah at the minute. She's having problems. She is struggling using the method and I think she's still battling with whether this is a better way of speaking than an old way of speaking. I what didn't think say? it would be this difficult. I thought I could do it. You've only done two. It's going to get easier. Can I have a few minutes? Sarah's not the only new student finding it difficult. Obviously not. Uh, do you have a second, please? Uh, yeah. I'm on a... Uh... Well, you can't even talk, mate. Excuse me, ladies. I'm trying to find the KFC. How's things going, Matthew? It's tough, man. <laughs> I just need to accept that Aww. some people are just not going to talk to me. Excuse me, ladies. And I am finding it hard to deal with it. Excuse me. Uh, Could I have a moment of your time, please? Okay. My name's Rory. The thing I am most nervous about today is people laughing at me. The programme teaches people how to cope with their stammers. Happy with that? A bit discouraged that they laughed. There's one student who's in his element. Do you have the time, please? Simon's just flying. He really, really is. And now that he's found his voice, you can't shoot him up. Do you have the time, please? I'm on a speech therapy course. All of his life, he's been bottling it up. And for him to be actually the strongest out here today, it's just incredible. Thank you for your time. Thank you, Thank you very much. Well done, Absolutely mate. brilliant. How good was that? Absolutely yeah. brilliant. How good was that? Well brilliant. Done. Well done, mate. Just down the street, Mohammed has also hit his stride and come up with a cunning way to reach his 100 contacts. <laughs> so I'll start with this end. <laughs> Mohammed Shafi. Nice to meet you. Mohammed Shafi. Nice to meet you. So how are you getting on, Mohammed? Mohammed Shafi. Nice to meet you. It's going really good. Mohammed Shafi. Nice to meet you. I'm building confidence every time. Mohammed Shafi. Nice to meet you. <laughs> 99% on 
of the people I've talked to have been really positive with me. Excuse me, please. The new students are gradually finding their voices, but Sarah is still battling her nerves. Excuse me, please. Oh my god, I don't, don't worry, don't worry. You said excuse me. You came straight. A deep breath. Nobody thinks you're strange. Don't give a shit about anybody. It's about you now, okay? And it's about you overcoming this. So don't care what people think. The task is for you, okay? I just felt that they, some people, because I'm speaking in this way, they think I'm odd. Is that any odder than, mm. <laughs> you know? Believe in yourself. I'm so excited. I'm so excited for you. But it has to be like that every time. Okay. okay. Okay, okay again, louder. Okay. Good. Okay, have fun. Excellent. I'm just right. gonna go off it. Okay. Yeah? I'm gonna jump over the edge of the cliff. Yeah? Okay. Ooh, I'm just I'm nervous. Don't worry, I felt sick on my first mm. one, like absolutely one away. Right. Yeah. But that's avoiding. Mm. And that's what we've been doing all our lives, yeah? So now's the time to do it. Yeah. Finally we're starting to see some courage being plucked up and it's really really good. Do you want to try it first? Yeah. No, you gotta do it. Just do it. Excuse me please. I'm a recovering stammerer working hard on my speech. Can I introduce my myself please? Of course you can. Sarah Webster. Nice to meet you Sarah. Thank you for your time. That's amazing. Nice. I'm so proud of you. Oh, you well done. done. It's incredible. Well done, Bill. Well done. Yeah. Once she's got over that first hurdle, there's no stopping her. Excuse me, please. I'm a recovering stammerer. Working on my speech. C can you tell me where t Tesco's is? She even plucks up the courage to announce herself to an entire shop. And I've been set a challenge to uh, speak to 100 per people to reduce my fear of speaking. Can I tell you all my, my name? Sarah Webster. Thank you for listening. Good. That, that was exciting and quite a relief to get, I managed to get everyone's attention. <laughs> it was a big thing. <laughs> It's the final day of the course, and there's one remaining task facing the new students. How you feeling? Quite nervous now. No holding back. That's the one. The last four long days of focus and concentration have been building up to the students delivering a speech in front of an audience, which includes members of their families. You will be fine. You really will be fine. And for some, the pressure is just too much. <laughs> it's too intense. Can't do it. But I'm trying. See why you're upset? Absolutely. But do you want to use the the method? I do. Okay, so you're not just saying, you know what? I've had enough of this. It's not working for me. I'm going to jack it in. I want this. Yes. Okay, cool. What are your concerns? People back home thought I didn't even have a stammer because I did such a good job of hiding it and now okay. it's going to be yes. so obvious okay so you're scared that you're always going to have to speak like this yeah very mechanical i don't speak like that all the time anymore why because i've been on the course 10 years you've been on three days okay this is the start of a, a 
long, long mm. process. I genuinely really want this and I really don't want to go back to Wednesday night. That's what I'm scared of. She's obviously going through a lot and there's lots of uh, torment in her mind still. She's still asking lots of questions, you know, even though she's, it's proven, she's proven to herself that it works, but yes, yeah, she's still having doubts and I, I just feel for her. Back in the room, the audience are waiting for the speeches to start. For the first time for some of you guys, you'll see your loved ones uh, speak and have a voice and be the person that they've always wanted to be. So, welcoming Matthew. In the past, people have look down on me because of my stammer. Now, I have a voice and I'm very, very proud of that. Matthew Gainey, recovering Samuel. I feel more in control of my voice now. And on Wednesday night, it seems like that was a different person. Good afternoon, everybody. Throughout my life, I couldn't even say my name. I was ashamed to talk to people. I've also been scared to do what I'm doing right now. These are big achievements that I've never imagined doing. I can't shut up now. <laughs> this is the proudest moment of my life. Mohammed Shafi, thank you. After today, I'll be going out into the real world, so I hope this is a step in the right direction. This time last week, my only true place of comfort was on the secondary school stage. But beyond the stage, I was very scared. I would like to thank Gareth Gates, who I have looked up to ever since I was six. Thank you very much. Next to speak is Sarah. remembered I have struggled and been embarrassed about my stammer and hopefully one day with sheer determination I will become a more confident and eloquent speaker and do what I want to do thank you for listening. I'm a really determined person, so I really want to stick up, stick with it, but it's a technique where I have to put my all into it and strip it right back to the bare basics before I can progress any further. The final student is Simon. Four days ago, his stammer was so severe, he blocked over every word he said. Can you tell me your name, please? Um, um, 
Mm, my... Mm, um, is Simon Robinson speaking. A few days ago, I would never have imagined myself being in full control of my stammer. I have learnt how to sound sexy. Just feel so magical now that this I can control everything I say. But most of all, I can now say my wedding vows. Thank you. Over the past few days, I have held back a few tears, but looking back, it's been worth every second. For the children mm. to be able to sit at night and have their daddy read a book to them, it's just amazing. I can't describe how it is. Those goodbye speeches were just incredible. This is just the start of the process for them though, and I know we keep on saying it over and over again, but they have to put the work in now. It's been a month since the course. In North Yorkshire, it's nearly bedtime for Simon's children. That's a proper trumpet sound, Maka Paka. <gasps> Boo wee woo wee fuss! Oopsie Daisy, are you going to dance? Maka Paka, are you going to join in? The last few weeks have been great actually, especially reading to the kids. I mean, that's something I've never been able to do properly. It's given me this whole new me, really. And there's one more thing that Simon needs to do to make family life complete. Do you look really good? Do you feel like you look good there? I scribble well. <laughs> <laughs> now that I am able to say I do on my actual wedding day, I do feel great. I mean, before the course, it's something I would have never imagined saying fluently. Yeah. I think I do. No. <laughs> <laughs> I never, ever, ever thought it would be possible for Simon to speak fluently. Even now, it, you know, I still get emotional that I can speak fluently, but to be able to do that on our wedding day, it's going to be amazing. I can't wait. I might just go and buy a Hawaiian shirt and, and just wear that. Don't you dare. <laughs> It means the absolute world to me, it really does. I think this will make such a big difference, it really will do. I mean, beforehand, I was blocking on every single word I spoke, and now I can say oh, what I want fluently, and it's going to be fantastic, it really is. I just cannot wait for the actual wedding day now, I really can't. I do. <laughs> Inverted, is it, is it bad or is it just like, like pain? Mohammed has also found a renewed self-confidence since the course. Right, Today yeah. he's on duty with his university football team. This is what I wanted to do one day for a real football team, such as Manchester United, which is my favourite team. It's because that is my dream job, so I'm just getting the experience right now. Before I would have been scared to do this. As long as I keep putting the effort and the hard work in, um, it, should, it should pay off. It's really down to me to achieve what I want to do in life. There is still a quite a long way to go. Oh, good girl. That's 2-1 now. That's a good girl. Two good girls.
In Scotland, it's been back to school for Rory. The Bothy Ballad was sang by the male farmers, singing about... Farm workers, yeah. Or, right. or workers, there you mm -hmm. go. After having the stammer for so long, I feel fantastic that I can just speak freely. One of my friends told me that not only do I sound more confident, but I look a lot happier as well. Yeah, but still, our final answer is Gaelic, though. Yeah. Okay, then. And Scots Ballad. Are we sure that's in English? Yeah. Yeah, sure, it's in English. And it makes me feel really empowered to just keep going on. A few months ago, Matthew had given up on becoming an actor. But now his dream is alive. This morning, he's in London's West End for an acting class. We're going to be improvising a scene. Two lovers sitting, having dinner, and the very last line is going to be, I'm leaving you. So how was your day? Long day, yeah, yeah, like always, nine to five, you know, hard yeah. work. It's know. been tough at work for you. Very it's tough, been very, been very tough, mm. yeah, mm. you know. What about you? It's been a revelation. I don't even realise that I'm using the technique now, and it feels so, so good, yeah. Good. Gareth has come along to offer some moral support. Good. I think you need to get out of the house and do more work. <laughs> really kind of you to say so. Well, you know, I'm being honest, actually, you know. I'm leaving you. Well done, mate. Oh, thanks, Gareth. It was really, really thanks, fantastic. Gareth. Thanks, Gareth. How did you find it? It's been amazing. I am starting to get used to the breathing now. Even in this environment, it's still holding up okay. Yeah, it's good. Any particular <laughs> roles that you'd like yeah, to play? Yeah, or? yeah, yeah. Um, yeah, I, I can see myself as a policeman. I don't know, on right. EastEnders, I don't know. Maybe. Brilliant. Yeah. You're yeah. working out what roles you want yeah. to play. That's good. In terms of dreams and ambitions, it's very important that we have these. And I think with a little bit more work, a little bit... Uh, more dedication, uh, I think you'll definitely be able to achieve some of yours. And maybe one day we will see you on EastEnders. <laughs> one day. As a one policeman. Day. <laughs> one day, yes. Of all the students, it was Sarah who found the course the most challenging. We had some real ups and downs on the course. And how have you found things since then? It's been a tough a few weeks but I know it's going to take time to progress with my speech and move on from this mechanical form. Absolutely, you know we all have good and bad days, mm. you know it's, it's certainly not just going to vanish this stammer all of a sudden. Sarah originally joined the course to give her the confidence to become a teacher. Teaching is something I've always wanted to do. I'm feeling nervous, but I'm really keen to get into a classroom and see how my technique holds up. Today, she's got that opportunity. I'm sure the fee is still very, very high. You know, we have literally thrown her right into the deep end, but she obviously has that and determination she wouldn't be here now if she didn't have that. Now I've brought with me today the story Fidgety Fish. Tiddler was always fidgety. He wriggled and squiggled. He trembled and shivered. And he shook and he quivered. And Short Tiddler. <laughs> yeah. I did it. <laughs> wow. Well, yeah, that felt really good. I, I relaxed into it. And I surprised myself. Well done. That was absolutely incredible. Seeing you there, being with the kids, and being so natural with the kids. 
It was really, really amazing to see. I built up all this worry and fear in my head and I didn't have to spend all the time thinking of what words to avoid. It was just took all that weight off my shoulders and I'm so glad that I you know, went out and did that and sure. and able to prove to myself that yeah. I can do it. Very smooth inside. In case Sarah has any doubts, Gareth has brought something to show her. Can you tell me your name, please? My name is... Sarah Webster. I'm in... Nanny. You know, all that tension, it's, it's hard to watch, mm. right? And so that's why I urge you to not ever give in on this because clearly it really, really works for you. Okay, so please don't ever give in. Please persevere. Yeah, stick with it and, yeah. Good. It's all about you now and how much you want it because you can do it and you will do it. Mm. Yeah. Now for Sarah and for all of the guys, it's about how they apply themselves in the real world, how much they practice, how much work they put in, doing it every day, like I do even now. They can achieve it and they will achieve it if they want it and if they put that hard work in. Nell Hediat brings us next week's documentary as she travels to Egypt and Bahrain to chat to young rebels in riots and revolutions. That's next Monday at 9. Next tonight, EastEnders. Boy, and uh, another one is a Mr. Beatboxer. You know, as a beatboxer, I would go ticka ticka and stuff like that. But like Gareth, there is one area of Rory's life where he is remarkably stammer-free. Hey there, Teenage Baltimore! Don't change your channel because it's time for the Corny Collins Show! I take my acting on stage as, as a bit of an escape, really. An escape from um, who I am. Uh, when I'm performing on stage, I'm not playing a Rory Melly, a little stammer boy. I'm playing someone else completely different with a different with a different background a different history different feelings and, and different thoughts it's great because it's like totally fluent on the stage speaking and the last play he was in i thought it'd be great now if he could just speak like that the whole time you know well, it doesn't work like that unfortunately I really want it to make a career out of singing and acting, but my fear is is that if if my summer doesn't improve, then then employers won't hire me. Kids in town. It's the end of day one. When the students arrived yesterday, Gareth videoed them all. Last night we ask you guys to tell us your name, to which all of you struggled. My name is Sarah Webster. But since then, Gareth has been drilling the new technique solidly. So now we're going to give you new students an opportunity to stand up and cancel out that situation. Whenever you're ready, there's no order again. Sarah Webster.
Simon Robinson. Today was long hours, it was hard work, and they've made a great improvement. But I don't want them to think that, oh, I've done it now, I've done it, and so I can sit back and relax a bit and become complacent. I just need to continue to work hard and hope that I'll be able to get The new students have taken the first step towards finding their voices. You're finding that you're actually getting used to the technique. Yes, slowly. It's important to highlight that this method is certainly not a cure. It's something that they'll continually need to work on, like I do, every day. And that's what will determine whether they have continued success or not. Ah, good. 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 What we want you to do is try and speak in a controlled way. Exaggerate it. It's all about using this new method, this new way of speaking. Let's not use any more than four words per breath. No more. Go now, please. I hope to become a uh, Mohammed is a trainee physiotherapist. Whenever I'm in the practicals, I'll get, I'll, I'll get nervous and then I'll probably just like uh, stammer. Talking to patients is an essential part of the job. If Mohammed can't do that, it might mean a change in career. How is how's your day been? Yeah, okay. Yeah, right. Today, so oh, yeah, that's, that's good. I know what I'm doing, but it's just the struggle of trying to say it. And if I can't say it, then they think that I don't really know it, which I do, but then my stomach gets in the way. But mainly focus on the hamstrings and the, uh, and the, uh, the, the quadriceps, and maybe do the IT band as well. To overcome my stomach would uh, really uh, help me. With my, with my, with my, a career, because that means I could do the jobs that I want to do. But if I didn't, it would make me get a job that doesn't involve talking, and uh, that would be it. The students are continuing to work hard on their technique, but Gareth has noticed some are finding it more difficult to adopt than others. Simon Robinson. Simon on Wednesday was the most overt, but often the, the easiest to crack because there's less things happening up here and it's more just, this is how I am. It's very clear that I have this real problem and so I'll just do anything, show me what to do. Whereas I think with Sarah, she's always managed to be fluent in situations in life. When you say a word, so like... Birth, and then breakfast. Why don't you just stop on the word when you know it's going to be difficult? I can see a sort of questioning why, why we're doing this. Is this much better than how we were speaking before? Well, right now, maybe not, because it's quite mechanical, but it's a, a means to an end. Because that people are going to know, still know, the stammer. Uh, she's not vocalising that yet but I can see it, and covert stammerers do that. Gareth decides to take Sarah to one side for some individual coaching. The way that you're using the technique is great. I still feel you can be more exaggerated, la, like I'm being now. Gareth Gates, Bradford. Sarah Webster. Suffolk. Good. What sort of muh 
music do you like? Oh. Release the air. Kinds of music. Good. Kinds again. Good. Kinds of music. Good. I just can't, <laughs> can't get, I can't get to grips. With the breathing? With, it sounds so mechanical, <laughs> but I'm trying to. Good, well, that's all we're asking just now. It's harder to take those steps backwards and speak mechanically. Of course it is, because you've spent years of trying to make people think you're fluent and you don't have this problem and this affliction. Yeah, and I understand how frustrating it is. I completely understand. We've all been there. Trust me, if you persevere with this, you will see results. Thank you. Cool. As a covert stammerer, Sarah tries to conceal it from others, especially around her family and boyfriend, Carpenter, right. Will. I've learned to live with the stammer now for 25 years. Just a couple more. She's become quite good at hiding it and very good at thinking on her feet to try and find different words. And it's obviously not a great way of dealing with it because quite often her sentences don't make the best of sense when she's desperately searching for a different word as rather than use a word she'd struggle on but uh, hopefully with the program she can get past that and use any word she wants to use. I'm quite happy I'm speaking to my friends and family and I'll, and I'll be able to speak quite well fluently really and just have the odd well. stammer here or there but I just want to be able to speak fluently at, at all given time, not just when I'm in, you know, my c comfort zone. Be careful. As a nanny, Sarah works with children every day, but her real dream is to become a teacher. When I first came out of university, this t t teacher said to me, you know, you'll never be able to become a teacher because of your stammer. Finding the right words to say how you feel can sometimes be hard. But what if you're one of Britain's 600,000 stammerers? <laughs> Stammering is a debilitating affliction which impacts their lives every single day. He's so nervous about saying his vows and doing a speech at the wedding. I need, I need, I need a voice, I need to be heard. But now to tackle their stammers head on, Stammer, stammer, I can't even say that word. They've enrolled on an intense four-day speech therapy course run by Gareth Gates. Hit these sounds. Imagine you're knocking these words down. At the end of the course, they'll have to face an audience and deliver a fluent speech. <laughs> Gareth's job is to make that happen. Good. Don't give a shit about anybody. It's about you now, OK? And it's about you overcoming this. <laughs> But can he teach them to break a habit Bip, bip, uh, of a lifetime? Bip. I understand how frustrating it is. I completely understand. And confront their greatest fears <laughs> to transform their lives forever. I genuinely really want this. Simon Simon has had a severe stammer his whole life. Sometimes I felt as the I've been through and 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 hell and then back with this. That's really good, Libby. It's lovely. Oh, try again. Print it straight away again. 25-year-old Sarah Webster has also stammered since early childhood. It has affected every aspect of her life, 
including her decision to become a nanny. For me, it's about the interaction with the with the ch the ch the ch children, and and when I'm with them, I'm just so much more at ease. Well, that has come out well. I feel that my stammer is just. Does not play such a like, large, you know, does not affect me so much at all. But even her choice of job is not without complications. There are certain words that I know that I will stand on, for instance, the, the word. Then, um, I try and use, well, I try and avoid that word so that I, so that I don't have to embarrass myself. But now Sarah and Simon are embarking on an unusual speech therapy course called the Maguire Program. I've had qu quite a few um, years of um. Beach thing. <laughs> and it hasn't ever helped this well is my last hope. The program takes a radical approach to speech therapy. Its courses are just four days long and are run exclusively by people who stammer themselves. Sarah and Simon's course leader is the actor, singer and voice coach, Gareth Gates. The course is a very intense four-day programme and it's about us giving these guys everything they need to help gain control of their stammer. Gareth also grew up with a stammer. It was the Maguire program which turned his life around. The thought of a stammerer helping to coach and teach other stammerers to speak is quite mind-blowing. And I reached a certain level on the program where I thought, well, maybe it's time to give back. And I... Programming everything they know about speech. For so long, the stammers dictated who they are and when they speak and how they speak. Now it's about those individuals taking control themselves. Today the new students will spend up to 12 hours working on this new technique. Good. It's really important that we just start to be disciplined and committed to ourselves and we start to follow directions. So nobody talking at all. It's important that the new students do not talk because it's just second nature for them to talk the way they've spoke all their lives. And so we ask them not to talk at all so that they don't slip back into those old habits. Living with a stammer is real hard work. It's frustrating, soul destroying. You can't be the person that you want to be. I made out I didn't know the name of my, my school for years. People had asked me, what school do you go to? Oh, uh, I can't remember. To save the humiliation of going <laughs> lower fields, you know? And I'd rather look stupid and dumb and thick as opposed to stammer in front of people. And again, that's, that's quite hard. I... Uh, I really want to help people who are um, um, who are really in need. Gareth has come a long way since the 17-year-old schoolboy first stepped onto our screens. Uh, my name is uh, oh, come on, man. Uh, just take this on. Gareth Gates is what I was trying to say. And watching that, I hardly recognise myself. When you're ready. Everybody's looking for that something. You are 100% coming to London. Yes. yes! <laughs> 
Gareth's overnight success was a dream come true, but it also put his voice under the most intense pressure. I've always had great confidence in delivering a song, but it was the everyday life stuff that I struggled with. He enrolled on the Maguire programme and has never looked back. Life for me these days is much better than 10 years ago, and I can now be the person I want to be. So on the board there is this basic cycle of speaking. This is what we follow every time we speak. Once they've got to grips with the new way of breathing, we will add sounds to that. But there's a perfect timing point, and if they miss that, the technique won't work. The perfect timing point where we speak is now. Okay? In three, two, one. Ah, good. We'll say every sound of the alphabet so that it affirms to themselves that they can say every sound. Good. Hit these sounds. Imagine you're knocking these words down. Alpha, Foxtrot, India, Juliet, Mike. Good. You can say every sound. So it's not a physical defect. It's just these building up of negative experiences, negative associations. Stammering is thought to be brought on by a number of different causes. For some, it's to do with the way the brain processes speech. For others, it could result from trauma. But in some cases, it may also be hereditary. For 16-year-old Rory Melly, stammering runs in the family. Rory's been stammering since he was three years old. And, and it was like... All of a sudden, in one sentence, one day, and he was trying to ask me something, and he just started stammering. And coming from a family who stammer, it was quite a shock. There's one very special person that guides the orchestra. Who is he? Is it the... Uh, I'm sorry, the uh, conductor? The conductor. Excellent. On various... Occasions at school, I have been called a few names. A, a reoccurring one is a, a stutter head, and a, another one is a summer boy. I absolutely love it. Joining Sarah and Simon on the course are students from across the country, including Matthew, Rory, and Mohammed. My challenge is to take these people and to equip them with the tools and techniques that they need to transform their lives. Thank you. Welcome, new students. This is the last time that you guys will be speaking like this. And from this moment on, you're going to be speaking with so much control. Am I nervous about it? Of course. There's a lot of pressure on me. But I want it to be a success because I know how much of a difference in life it will make. It's the night before the course begins, and in just four days' time, the new students will be expected to deliver a fluent speech in front of an audience. But right now, that seems like a long way off. Do you have any brothers or sisters? Yes, I have. Th 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 three, three. <laughs> I have um... two sisters and three. <laughs> Brothers. Um, I'm, uh, I'm, 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 I'm 20 years old. My address is f flat 55. I am convinced. Well done, mate. Well done. Well done, fella. Great. Well done. Well done. Tension, dub, and no eyes, um, shot. I found it hard, yeah. Real hard.
Simon lives in North Yorkshire with his partner Sarah and their two children. I can do bullseye. Being a parent who stammers brings its own worries. Don't eat it. Simon often gets scared that it's going to affect the children's speech. Um, like reading bedtime stories, it prefers me to do things like that because it will take him so much longer and I can see him getting frustrated with himself and it, it does upset me as well because of how frustrating it must be for Simon. Right, Sheldon. And... Colour some more. Next year, Simon and Sarah are planning to get married. I think he's so nervous about saying his vows and doing a speech at the wedding, but he can't give up on doing things just because of his stammer. To infinity and beyond. Of her come and be able to control my um, 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 son, Dama, it would um, mean um, everything. It's day one of the course. This morning, Gareth will begin to rebuild the new students' voices. But first, he has to break down their old ones. Now is a brand new start. We're going to strip back everything. We're going to learn to talk again, starting with learning a new way of breathing. Every time somebody speaks, it starts with a breath. And so that's what we're going to address first and teach them a new way, a more powerful way of breathing that will assist our new speaking technique. To help the new students get a feel for this, they wear belts around their chests. When we breathe in, the ribs move out. We breathe out, the ribs move in. So we breathe when we want to breathe. We speak when we want to speak. Okay? We're no longer dictated by our stammers. This technique is called costal breathing. So breathe in three, two, one, and breathe. If they can master it, Gareth believes even the most severe stammer can be brought under control. Really fill those lungs so they can't be filled anymore but it involves re 